What's up guys, this is Jeremy, and I want to tell you my story of how I became an R.L. Stein collector. There's not going to be any books at all in this video, it's just going to be me talking. So if you want to hear my story, here it is. So I first heard of Goosebumps back in like 93, 94, around the time when I was in like second or third grade. I remember seeing other kids in school with these books, and back then as a kid, the book covers were pretty creepy looking. And like back then, I had never seen any kind of other books, like at least kids books that had any kind of covers like that um, and that kind of artwork. So right away, that was the first thing that caught my attention back then. But I never actually started reading the books until around 95, I think. The summer right before I was about to go into the fourth grade, my teachers had told my parents that I needed to improve my reading skills. So my parents decided that I was going to start reading books more and they asked me what kind of books did I want to read. I told them that I had seen these books called Goosebumps, and uh, they were like scary books for kids. Now, keep in mind that back then when I was a kid, I used to be like scared of everything. My mom watched a lot of horror movies, and I always wanted to watch these movies with her. So I was like that kid that was sitting on the couch like covering my face with my hands and then like trying to peek through my fingers so I could see what was going on. I was scared of all kinds of stuff back then. So my parents end up taking me out to the store to go get a Goosebump book. I'm pretty sure it was at Walmart back then um, when I got my first book. That would have been back when Walmart actually used to sell Goosebumps and like Fear Street, Ghost of Fear Street. They used to have all those books back then. I don't remember exactly what number book they were on at the time. It was somewhere in like the 30s, I think. But when I went to the store, the first book that I picked out was A Night in Terror Tower. And just out of all the books that were there at the store that day, that one I thought was just the coolest cover. That was book number 27, so that one was like a more recent book, but it wasn't the newest one at the time. I think there was other books I wanted, but my parents were like, we'll buy you this one book. If you read it and you like it, then we'll come back and buy more. So A Night in Terror Tower was the first book I read, and I absolutely loved that book. The parts where the kids were like losing their memories, uh, and they couldn't remember what their last name was and stuff like that, I was so confused on what was happening. And then when I actually got to the end of the book and saw the twist and understood what was actually going on, like, my little mind was blown back then. I thought that was, like, the coolest book I had ever read. And I would say A Night in Terror Tower is probably my favorite Goosebump book of all. I haven't read every Goosebump book, but that one's definitely one of my favorites. But at that point, I immediately became obsessed with Goosebumps. And obviously, my parents were excited because I read this book and was all excited about it and wanted to read more books. So... They were very happy to go to the store and buy me more Goosebumps. When I was in elementary school, I got dubbed like the Goosebumps kid. It was just this one particular school that I went to. But I showed up to school like every day with a Goosebump book. And then like as soon as I would finish one, I'd show up the next day with another book. I'd be reading my book like in the lunchroom in the cafeteria. And then I'd be like reading it in class. And then I'd be reading it like on the bus on the way home. And I was just always reading a Goosebump book. I remember like laying in bed past my bedtime, like laying next to the window with my blinds up a little bit so like the light from the street light would be coming through my window and I'd be like laying there next to the window trying to use this little bit of light just so I could read and I'd sit there and read the chapter and I'd get to the end and it'd be like a cliffhanger type of ending so then I'm like yeah I'm just gonna read one more chapter then I would read one more and then same thing again I'd be like well I gotta see at least what happens in the next chapter so then I'd read again and then I'd be up all night like sitting here reading these books. So then as time goes on, uh, the TV show started. Now I remember going and like recording every episode on VHS tapes. For some reason, I remember The Haunted Mask being the first episode that ever aired. Um, I know even though like on the seasons, I think The Girl Who Cried Monster is the first episode. But I just remember The Haunted Mask. But uh, I remember recording each episode up until they played A Night of the Living Dummy. There were these people that my parents were friends with, and uh, I used to cut their grass for them. Uh, so the day that that episode aired, I had to go cut grass that day, and I didn't make it home in time to record the episode. I managed to watch like the last couple minutes of the episode right as it was wrapping up, but I completely missed being able to record it. And then after that, I was kind of disappointed, so I like lost interest in recording all the other episodes after that because I felt like I was missing that one. But I remember being so excited for that episode when I knew it was coming out. Neither Living Dummy was another book that I liked back then. So I was pretty disappointed when I didn't get to record it. But needless to say, I was a Goosebump fanatic for a few years. I remember having like the t-shirts and I had like the ones that would have like curly on them and it'd be like glow in the dark. One year on Halloween, um, I got a curly mask and my brother got the Horror Land mask and we wore those for Halloween. I showed both those masks in one of my old videos. 
the Horrorland mask is the exact one that my brother had from when we were kids, but the Curly mask isn't the same one that I had back then. I don't remember what happened to my original, but I also remember having like the Terror in the Graveyard, uh, the board game. I thought that game was just like really cool. It was like amazing. I remember always wanting to play that game with my friends. I thought the whole 3D thing was cool and like shifting the graves back and forth and like the board always changing. I thought that was really cool. I remember as a kid, even like when I wouldn't have my friends over, this is going to sound cheesy, but I used to actually just play the game by myself, like just taking each turn playing like each character. And I remember I'd be playing it just to see who would make it to the end. I also remember like some kind of, it, it wasn't like a card game, but it was like cards that would tell a story. And I think like on each turn you had to keep adding a card to it. Basically, like, each time a card was added, the story kept getting extended, and you just kind of had to keep going around, like, making the story longer and longer and longer, and each time it got to the next person, you had to repeat the story from the beginning back up to where it was, and then you had to add another part to the story, and the next person had to tell the story all the way back up to that part. I wasn't as into that game, but, uh, I do remember having that. Someone in my family got it for me one year for Christmas. Other than that, I don't remember having too much, like, memorabilia type stuff. It was just the books that I had. And I do remember having the uh, Tales to Give You Goosebumps, number six. That one that came with the glove, the little green monster glove. I think it was supposed to be promoted like as a stocking back then. But I remember having that too, and I thought that was really cool. I wish I still had that. But I continued reading Goosebumps up until about 97, uh, when I was in the seventh grade. My parents finally decided that it was time for me to read something that was a little more mature, something that was for a different age group. So my mom goes out and buys... Fear Hall the beginning and Fear Hall the conclusion. Now I didn't ask for these books but my mom knew it was an older book series from R.L. Stein, so she figured since I like Goosebumps I could probably read these too. And I'll be honest when I got the book and I saw like the cover of them, I know they say don't judge a book by its cover, but when I saw those covers like I'm so used to seeing the Goosebump books and all this really cool artwork, like once I saw the cover to that book like I was not interested in reading it. Like it just it didn't look fun to me. So, I tried to just keep reading the Goosebump books. And then eventually my mom was like, when are you going to read those books I got you? Why aren't you reading the books I got you? And then eventually I'm just like, okay, fine, I'll read it. Now, I remember I took the books to school with me. And I think it was like uh, one of my classes we had like the sustained silent reading thing. So that was the book I took to school with me to read. It took me a bit to get into it at first. But once I got to the first actual like murder scene in the story, my mind was blown. I couldn't believe that someone was actually getting killed in this book. Like this never happened in a Goosebump book. And if I remember correctly, the first murder scene was when the guy was killed at the little putt-putt course where he was like beat to death. And um, for me as a kid, putt-putt was like a big part of my like childhood because me and my dad would go down to the beach and stuff for the summers and we would go to all the little putt-putt courses. So the book took this like meaningful situation to me and just like turned it into something that was like dark and scary but then I keep reading the book more and then you get like halfway through it and uh I'll give a quick spoiler alert you find out that the girl's like crazy and that she's like schizophrenic and has all these different personalities and that all this stuff that's going on isn't really going on or, or it is but it's like she's pretending to be all these different people so back then as a teenager that blew my mind like that was a whole nother level of like twists so I ended up getting really into this book, and I would say that's probably not my favorite of uh, Fear Street books. Unlike A Night in Terror Tower being my first book and then becoming my favorite book, it wasn't so much the same with uh, The Fear Hall. Like, I really did enjoy the book back then, and it was, like, a really good book. But as an adult now, going back and reading them, that was not necessarily my favorite. I feel like there's other ones that are, like, a little better than that one. But unfortunately, back then, those were the only two Fear Street books that I had. That following year, in like 98, I finally stopped collecting Goosebump books. I remember I had the original 62 books, then I had like a few of the uh, Give Yourself Goosebumps. I didn't really have all those. I just had like the, I know, at least the first 10 and then like a few more after that. And I had the first three books of the 2000 series. Creature Teacher was the last book I remember buying. But the reason I stopped reading the books was because that was the year I got my PlayStation. And I got introduced to the Final Fantasy series and other RPG games. And at that point in my life, I became a hardcore gamer. I played video games like when I was a kid because I had, you know, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and my 64. But once I got my PlayStation, that was where like all I wanted to do 
do was play video games. So I didn't have time to read books anymore. Like I had to play these games, you know, and then a few years goes by and then like I'm 16, I start playing guitar. Now between music and video games, I have absolutely no time to read books at all. I didn't get rid of uh, all my Goosebump books. I still held on to them. It was something that I just really enjoyed from when I was growing up that I wanted to hold on to those things. Because I thought one day I'll go back to them and I'll read some of the ones I never got to read. Now when I was in high school, if I had to read a book for something, um, I would go to the school library and I would check out whatever Fear Street books they had in the library. So I did continue to read more Fear Street books. Uh, after I'd actually stopped buying them, but it was just whichever ones I found. I don't know if schools do this anymore, but I remember when I was back in like elementary school and middle school, uh, I remember they had this like accelerated reader thing where you would check out books from the library and uh, after you would read the book, you'd go on this whole thing on the computer and it would just like be a quiz where it would ask you questions about what went on in the book and uh, you know, you'd get points and stuff on your questions that you answered. But for some reason, you didn't get a lot of points when you would read R.L. Stein books. Like if I remember kids would read other things and they're like, oh yeah, I got this many points. And then it's like, they read just like one or two books and it's like, I've read all these R.L. Stein books and I only got these like few points. I don't even remember what the purpose of that whole thing was, but I guess it was just to make us read books back then. But anyways, we'll skip forward to about around 2003 or so when I was 17. I don't remember exactly what it was, but for some reason, Goosebump books just got up in my mind all of a sudden, and it's like, I had this urge to just go back and want to read some old Goosebumps again, finally, like I thought years ago, I was like, you know, one day I want to come back to these books. Well, that urge finally hit me, you know, years later. I go home, we had like little closets throughout the house that had storage stuff, because uh, I was in a military family, so we were always moving around places, and stuff was always getting packed up and moved in different places, so... I ain't seen my Goosebump books in a while. I assumed they were packed up somewhere in the house. So I was like digging through the closets. I couldn't find them anywhere. And then finally I go and ask my parents. And I was like, hey, where's where's all my old Goosebump books at? And just as casual as ever, they're like, yeah, we sold them all at a yard sale. And I was like, what? But they're like, yeah, you know, we thought you were older now. And those were kids books. You didn't care about them anymore. And I was like, well, I wanted to hold on to them in case I read them again one day. But I was pretty upset back then that they had got rid of all these books, which rightfully, my parents bought all those books back then so they could have done whatever they wanted with them, but I never actually told them that I wanted to hold on to them. I just assumed they weren't just going to get rid of them all. But back then, I was always like, yeah, I want to try and get them again. I want to try and find all, these, all the Goosebump books and try and have them. So years go by, and I really didn't try to attempt collecting them again. I just let it be, and I always just kind of sat around like, man, I wish I had all my books still. So finally, I think it was like the later part of 2007, the beginning part of 2008. Uh, I think it was like more the beginning of 2008. I finally had some extra money and was just like, you know what? I'm going to go up on eBay and I'm going to find the original set of the 62 Goosebump books. So I went on there and I bought them. I, th I don't remember what I paid for my original set. It was like a hundred and... 30 something I think and then it was like 15 for shipping handle so it was like around 140 150 somewhere and I don't remember exactly what I paid but I got all the books and luckily whoever had these books before me they had the box sets to two of them and I showed them in one of my videos the boxes that they were in were in really good condition and then a good bit of the books that had the trading cards inside of them a lot of those trading cards were still there there's a few that are missing but most of them are actually there still but I was all excited to have my original 62 books back I just wanted to have those original books again and I wanted to go back and read of some of the ones that I never actually got to read because when I was younger I actually didn't read all of them I read a good bit but there was times where I was playing video games and playing with friends and stuff. So so I didn't get to read like every single book. So I was just like, I'm going to read these again. I'm going to hold on to them. And then maybe one day if I have kids, you know, I'll hand these books down to them and I'll share the books with them. But shortly after I got my books off eBay, um, I remember being at work and uh, I work at a Sam's Club. So there's like the center section where they have books and stuff like that. They had the first two books of the Horrorland series together in like a little two pack. And I was like, oh, cool. Goosebumps is coming back out again. Because I didn't realize that was out. And I think the first 
few had already come out. Um, I think they just happened to get a thing of a, a two pack of the first two books. I don't remember exactly how many books were out, but I know it was at least maybe like the first five or so were already out. And I was just thinking like, maybe I could start collecting these books too and just add to my old books that I have. And then as I got to thinking a little more, I was like, well, if I buy those, then I might as well go back and try and find all the 2000 series and try and find all the Give Yourself Goosebumps. So I started buying the Horrorland books. I got caught up to where they were at the time. And then I just kept up with it as, as it went on. And then I started going to old bookstores and stuff trying to find the other Goosebump books. Now at this time when I was going out and trying to hit up used bookstores and find Goosebump books, I would find a lot of the original books, but I wasn't finding as many of the 2000 series or the Give Yourself Goosebumps. And then one thing that I was noticing when I was going to these stores is that, you know, I wasn't finding the Goosebump books I was looking for, but on the other hand, there's all these Fear Street books and everything else that he wrote as well. And uh, I remember one day going to the store all excited, hoping I was going to find something cool. And I went in there and I didn't find any Goosebump books. And it was like, I was so disappointed, but I felt like I wanted something. So I was like, well, screw it. I'm going to buy a bunch of these Fear Street books. So I bought, you know, however many that day. After I get back home and set my books down with the other ones, it just, it kind of came to me. And I was like, maybe I should actually start buying this. I'm buying Fear Street books too, because then when I go to the bookstores, that'll give me more to look for. So it was like the more books I got, the more I was like, well, I should just start collecting books. I would go to the few local bookstores that were around, and anytime they would have like new R.L. Stein books that I didn't have, I would just grab up anything that I didn't have. Uh, and at the time, I may go to a certain store and find like a good bit of books, like maybe five or ten books, and there'd be other times where I'd go in there and I'd only find like one or two things. So at one point, it kind of got to where when I was going to the bookstores, I was getting more of the uh, Fair Street books and some of the more standalone novels because it was getting... It was hard to find the Goosebump books that I wanted, so I was going online to order those books. My entire 2000 series was purchased online through Amazon, and back then, back in like 2008 and 2009 when I first started collecting these and when my collection first started really growing, these books were really cheap back then. When I would go on Amazon and buy books from the 2000 series, every single book I bought was like one penny. And I would pay $3.99 shipping and handling, so I'd end up paying $4 for each book, but that was it. Because I know now some of the books go for, you know, a couple dollars, and I've paid $50 for a Goosebump book before. But these books used to be super cheap at one point because they weren't being bought up like crazy like they are now. There was one book in the 2000 series that I did find at a flea market, and I think I paid like $1 for it. But every other single book I bought online. And then eventually I did find some of the Give Yourself Goosebump books in stores. But I ended up buying a majority of it online as well. Now there was one day in particular when I went to one of the local bookstores. And it's one of the like better ones that was around here. At the time it was one of the better ones. Um, where I would go to get a majority of my books. Because there was a lot of books that were coming in pretty frequently. And one day when I was looking around, my eyes kind of dropped off to the side and was just looking next to where all the main R.L. Stein books were. Off to the side, I just happened to notice this book. I saw Stein on the side and I pulled out the book and looked at it and it was one of his children's joke books. It was the jovial Bob Stein book. And I looked at the date on it, you know, saw that it was from like late 80s and I was just like, whoa, this book's really old. And that was the first time I had come across an R.L. Stein book that was outside of like the typical Fear Street, Ghost of Fear Street, whatever. So I was like, this is pretty cool. And you know, I mean, again, this book's only like a dollar or something. So I was like, I'm going to buy it. And then at that point, once I found that kid's book, it finally hit me. I was like, I'm just going to collect anything, everything R.L. Stein, not just Goosebumps and Fair Street books. So then at this point, you know, I went to R.L. Stein's website where he's got this book list that you can print off. And I printed this list off and uh, I carried it in my car. So anytime I was like at a bookstore, I could pull this list out and see what I have, what I don't have. And there was things, you know, that wasn't even on that list that I was writing on the back of the pages and stuff of what I had. And then that was when I started buying other things like Rotten School and Mostly Ghostly. But those were a little harder to come across. I didn't find as many of those. But everything kind of changed when this one particular store opened up in my town. So eventually this store opened up in my town called Second and Charles. I don't remember exactly what year it was when the store opened up. It had to be somewhere around like 2012, maybe a little before then or maybe a little after. But it was it was somewhere in there. It's been open. It's been there for a couple years now. But there was a guy that used to work with me and uh, and I told him that I collected R.L. Stein books. 
and then he told me to check out this store because it was getting ready to open soon. His girlfriend worked at this store, or she was getting a job at this store, and it was opening up soon. But Second and Charles would just be like a second-hand retro type of store. They sell all kinds of video games from all different systems, um, but it's whatever kind of stuff people bring in. So they would sell video games, they sell books, movies, CDs. The stores that I've been to, it's kind of becoming a more of like a novelty type store because they're selling all kinds of extra stuff now. Uh, like they got all kinds of board games, but it's all board games related to like pop culture type stuff. They got t-shirts. Last time I went to my second and Charles, they had like three different Goosebump shirts. They had a Night of the Living Dummy shirt. They had a Ghost Beach and they had a Haunted Mask shirt. But they got all kinds of stuff that they sell here. Toys, all kinds of stuff. And the store actually used to be an old Books A Million. It had been empty for a while. So they turned it into Second and Charles. So when the guy at my work told me about it, I knew where it was. So I was just waiting for the store to open. I remember going in there maybe just a couple days, like right after it opened. I don't, I don't think I went there like opening day. But it's a pretty big store. And uh, there really wasn't much people in there. It was just a few people here and there walking around looking through different sections. But I go in the store and I go back and I start looking through the book aisles trying to see if I can find Goosebump books anywhere. And in the store, there's like a whole aisle. And then to each aisle, you have different sections to each aisle. And then each row of shelves, you know, on each individual section as it goes down the aisle. So each aisle will be like three or four sections put together. But I finally find where the Goosebump books are. And my jaw literally just like dropped. I know I had this like look on my face. There was an entire section of books that were just nothing but goosebump books they had books stacked facing outward and they were duplicates stacked going out you know with all the extras behind it and then right next to it they'd have the books turned sideways and then they would just have like rows of books going down and they had like the original series they had give yourself goosebumps they had the 2000 series the horror land books they had all kinds of stuff I was so excited. I was like, it was unreal. It was like a dream to see all of these Goosebump books just sitting there. And all these books, some of them would be like 90 cents and some would be like, you know, a dollar fifty. And then maybe here and there, there'd be one that would be like maybe two dollars. But majority of them being around like a dollar or like a dollar fifty. I was so excited to see all these books and I was stuck between what I wanted to buy because there was just so much stuff there that I didn't have but I knew like realistically I could only spend so much money and on my first trip to the store I think I spent about forty dollars but I came out that store with like 30 books because they were all only like a dollar something a piece and it I was struggling to decide like which ones I was gonna buy and I was so excited to find all these books and then I'm like thinking in my mind I'm like well I, there's gonna be other people around here that gotta collect R.L. Stein books too I know I can't be the only person so I was like nervous I was like well what if I come back all these books are gone and I was like then I'm, I'm gonna miss all these books that I don't have but I ended up you know picking out like I said about 30 books or so and I'm like struggling to get all these books to the counter and I was so excited to hurry up and pay and get out of there so I paid for my books and everything and then as I'm getting ready to go out the door the people that work there they're like oh yeah we sell these little tote bags for however much would you like to buy one of these and I'm like no nah, I'm cool I don't need it and I'm grabbing up these books in my arm and like the best way for me to explain this is if you've seen like the old animated Cinderella movie there was the one little mouse, his name was Gus. There was the one part in the movie where they were eating the corn, and the little mouse Gus had, like, all the corn stacked up in his arms, like, up to his face. That was me trying to come out the store, like, holding these, like, 30 Goosebump books. I got, like, a stack of, like, 15 or so in one arm, and then another stack on my other arm. I'm, like, walking backwards out the door trying to carry all these books. And then by the time I get out to my car, you know, I got my hands full, and I got to get my keys out so I can get in my car. Needless to say, I was right back in this store just a couple days later. And I think I probably bought about 20 more books or so, uh, this time making all of them Fear Street books. The Fear Street section wasn't quite as massive as the Goosebump section was, but it was, it was still a pretty good size and there was a ton of books that I still did not have. So when this store opened, my collection grew very quickly. I still was picky about certain things. Like for example, at one point I wasn't collecting compilation books because I would go to the store and I would see, you know, all these books that I didn't have. And then here's these compilation books where it's like you know there's these three books together but I already have those three books individually so I didn't want to waste my money on buying a compilation of books that I already had when there was these individual books that I didn't have so a lot of times I passed up stuff like that and just focused on individual books and trying to complete a series
Like I said, the store opened somewhere around 2012-ish. So after a couple years of it being open, after my collection kind of got started getting up into the couple hundreds, like two, three hundred books, it was getting to where I was going in the store and just everything that was on the shelf now, like I had and things that I wasn't finding in the stores, I would just go up online and get. So eventually it got to the point where when I would go to the store, the only thing I was finding was like the compilations and stuff that I wasn't collecting. So then the bigger my collection got, it got to where I became more open about out what were all the different things that I was going to collect so then I did start collecting compilations I don't like getting duplicates there has to be a very like distinctive reason as to why I had to pick up a duplicate like for instance I have two copies of the original haunted mask one of the copies the titles distinctively different on the front of it the way it's written out because it's like a almost like a foily kind of whatever the way it's written and where it says the haunted mask and then there's an actual mask in the back of the book like a little cardboard cutout so that's that's a reason for me to have a duplicate I don't like picking up duplicates. I've met other collectors that just buy up multiples of books regardless of whether they have them already. But for me, I like to keep books in circulation for other collectors because there's no point in me like hoarding all these books. You know, like I'm trying to make the value of my books go up because now you guys can't find any of them anymore. You know, I like finding books so I know how other people got to feel when they find something cool. So I like to keep other books in circulation. I don't like to just buy up duplicates of everything. But anyways... My collection was going good for a couple years. Started getting closer up in that like 400 close to 500 range. And pretty much every time I would go to, you know, Second and Charles or any of the other stores that I would go to, even if I was to find a bunch of Fear Street books or a bunch of Goosebump books, chances were everything that's on the shelf I pretty much already have. So I didn't really buy as much stuff in stores. So I ended up going online to find a lot of the books that I never did get to come across. The ones that the few that I was looking forward to finish up certain collections. But everything was going good up until about 2016, which I'm pretty sure was when the first Goosebumps movie was released. And anyone who was collecting R.L. Stein or just Goosebumps, whatever you collect, if you were a collector at that time when the movie came out, everyone knows that those books just up and disappeared once the movie came out. All of a sudden, everybody wanted to buy Goosebumps books now. I remember... I think like within the first week that the movie, the first movie was out, I remember going to Second and Charles and just being like shocked at the fact that there was no Goosebump books at all in the store. And I was thinking like maybe they had rearranged the store and the books were in a different spot now. I was like, no, there were no Goosebump books. I went over to the Fear Street section. There was maybe like four or five books and it was like the babysitter and like just like the typical books that you always find in Fear Street. Now that the hype of everything has died down a bit since the first movie, I know the second movie's actually out right now, but I know the hype isn't as big as it was the last time. And um, like when I go to the bookstores now, I am starting to see Goosebump books start to fill back up on the shelves a little bit. Usually when I go there now, it's mainly just Horrorland books and up. Like the most wanted and slappy world and Hall of Horrors. That's usually what I find. If I do find any of the originals, it's usually not the very first originals. It's usually like those second wave of like prints that came out where it was like the same covers, but they had like the thick uh, slime border around like the top and all down the sides of the book. That's usually what the originals look like now when I find them. Like a rare occasion, I'll come across the actual original, original ones. Nowadays, though, with my collection, now that I'm over like 520 something books, I've actually gone up on Amazon and made like a wish list and all the books that I know I am looking for and certain ones that I don't have, I've put them all together on a wish list. It's much easier now to carry a list of what I don't have rather than a list of what I do have. So that way, anytime I'm out, if I'm looking for books or anything and I come across something, I can always pull up my phone and go to that list on my Amazon thing and it's like, if that book's on this list, then that's, that's something I have to get. Usually now when I do come across something in stores that I actually don't have, I get pretty excited because it, I used to, you know, find stuff all the time and now it's just over the past couple of years it's get to where like on a rare occasion I find something that I don't have so those those moments where I do find something new I get really excited you know when I buy something online it's different because I I know what I'm looking for and I'm expecting it when it comes in the mail and stuff but to just go to a store and find something like that's always really cool but honestly that's about it I've gone from when I was a child and pretty much told my story all the way up to about now and I know I've talked long enough uh, if there was a few things I could say at the end of this, just to kind of help with collecting and looking for books, 
I do suggest if you haven't done this go to RL Stein's website and print off the list that he has on that website I'm pretty sure it's been updated I haven't looked at it in a really long time last time I did look at it I noticed there was a few changes from back when I had originally printed the list so go up on there and print that out carry that around with you if you want to collect a bunch of RL Stein stuff rather than just one particular thing going to a lot of different like retro type stores or used bookstores secondhand type stores um, goodwills thrift stores lots of places to look and it's really just about a consistency thing of always checking these places because some of these stores you don't know what comes in them and like when I mentioned second and Charles earlier if you go to their website they have a uh, quite a couple stores listed in in the United States uh, different states that they have you just go to their locations click on whatever state and then they'll show you the multiple stores in that state and another thing is when you go to these places, especially a big place like Second and Charles, a tip would be to know exactly where all the spots are to look for the books. Because I can go into this store and I will go to like the Children's Intermediate series. So there will be the G's, you'll have Goosebumps, and usually Ghost of Fear Street's right there in that G section. But you can go down the aisles a little more and hit like the M's and now you've got the mostly ghostly books. And go a little further and you got the R section, now you've got Rotten School. Then you can actually go through like young adult authors alphabetically and then you can find Stein, you know, in the S section. So here's more R.L. Stein books. Same thing, I can go over to the teen thriller section and here's all these Fear Street. Now I can go over to the, you know, the adult fiction section and now here's Red Rain, Superstitious. So know where to look when you go to some of these stores. I've been to other stores before, used bookstores where it's like they just pretty much take all the R.L. Stein stuff and throw it in one spot and that's it. But some stores really do categorize their stuff and you really have to look and know where to look for these books. Because honestly, you never know what you'll come across. Learn to have an eye for things. Learn to recognize these sides of these bindings. In time, you collect enough stuff, you kind of get like a sixth sense for it. Because there's sometimes when I'm in the store and I will just, something will kind of hit me and I'll stop and look at this one random section. And I will find R.L. Stein books just completely out of place. And it's just like a weird thing. I just, I'm like drawn to them for some reason. And then usually, you know, I'll have someone like my wife with me. So I do have an extra set of eyes going around finding stuff. There's been plenty of times where I've looked at a shelf and completely overlooked something. And then she goes right behind me and finds something that I looked over multiple times and didn't realize it was sitting there. So that's one other thing. Having other people that can go out and help you look for stuff. I have friends that I work with that, you know, they know that I collect R.L. Stein stuff. So they'll come and tell me that they found something somewhere or whatever. So, like, it's good to have extra people out there looking out for you while you're collecting. Well, I guess that's going to be it for now. If you guys listen to this video all the way to the end, thank you very much. I know I talked for a good bit of time. So thank you again, and I hope all you guys keep collecting, and I hope your collections grow as well.